proof approval. The designer is providing a proof from the printer to approve before the print begins. Smart designers always get the client to sign off on a proof as the designer has marked up to prevent reprinting costs due to a difference of opinion. Common designer requests may be to suggest adjustments to the skin tones, to brighten the white areas, and, um, or uh, logo color accuracy, or softening certain areas, and to, to add added definition. All photo retouching must be done before the art is released to the printer, as color adjustments made on press will negatively affect the balance of the CMYK relationship. Proofing. Designers are easily frustrated at the attempt to convert an image on their monitor into printed paper on ink with ink. This is due to the fact that all monitors and desktop printers are calibrated differently and from the conversion of RGB on your computer monitor to the CMYK on paper, not to mention the difference in printing methods, ink, paper, and presses. Low-cost proofing systems are used to check positioning and high-end systems are used for color approval. Below are the most commonly used proofing systems. A single color paper proof. These are blueprints or blue lines used to check copy positioning, size, pagination, and artwork alignment. Press proofs. These are the actual paper and ink used in the final piece and were actually printed on the offset press that they will be using. So because of the expense and time involved, they're only used when a proof cannot be simulated off press. Analog proofs. Analog proofs are generally created by multiple layers of film exposed to a light sensitive material. And digital proofs are created in a variety of methods, commonly by dive sublimation prints and laser or thermal proofs, uh, even ink transfer onto a carrier, electrostatic proofs that charge particles directly on the paper, and inkjet proofs that spray colored liquid on the paper. Image reproduction. Printed photographic images are either continuous tone images or half tone image. The continuous tone images are, they possess a virtually unlimited range of color or shades of gray. The most common continuous tone that you see are, fo are photographic prints. So a common example of continuous tone device is a computer screen. A monitor represents a limited number of colors of gray levels, generally from 256 or more colors. The difference between one shade and the next is almost imperceptible to the human eye. Any pixel may represent any color. The color components of the pixel are analog and may vary in infinite steps. This eliminates the need to convert an image into a halftone to achieve a specific color or shade. Halftone images. The printed image you see in a magazine newspaper are not continuous tone images. They are halftone images. A halftone image is, a opt is an optical illusion created by a dot pattern that when perceived at normal reading distance appears to be a continuous tone image. Upon closer examination with a loop, you'll find that the halftone image is merely a series of dots which, when seen at a certain distance, resemble the intended color. A halftone allows us to technically reproduce the illusion of continuous tone on paper using offset lithography. Halftone quality. The quality of your halftone will result from the amount of variation of tonal range or the variation in contrast that the halftone possesses. A good halftone can be identified as possessing tonality within each step of a 10-step gray scale. Using a 10-step gray scale, the highlight areas of pure white are represented at step 0, while the darkest black shadows of pure black are represented at step 10. A densitometer allows us to measure the density levels to a much higher degree than the human eye can perceive. Tonal compression. On a sunny, bright day, your eyes may perceive a tonal value range of over a thousand different values, from the brightest white in the sky to the darkest black in the forest. The same printed image on photographic paper will reproduce the scale from 100 to 1, and the halftone screening and printing again may further reduce this image down to 20 to 1. So this is a reduction of tonal range is called tonal compression. The number of tones that remain in the final printed image represent an image's tonal range. Two critical factors that determine the tonal range. One is the paper, the brightness of the unprinted paper and the maximum ink density. These factors represent the two ends of the image tonal range. No highlight may be printed lighter than the paper's value and no shadow may be printed darker than the, the densest solid black.